Hello everybody, Leo here. Today, we want to take our time and go through the 0x02 Shell Input Output Redirections and Filters project. Now, this is one of the most essential and fundamental concepts in software engineering. So you want to take your time and understand as I take you shortly through the explanations. What is Shell Input Output Redirections and Filters? Now, here I am in my notes. And it says a shell input and output redirection is a way of changing the way data flows between commands in a unit like operating system shell. So guys, whenever we talk about input and output redirections in shell, we are looking at the flow of data. This is very important because everything we are going to be doing, we are going to be moving data and displaying it from one end to the other. So we impute data and we get a display of data. This is what this entire project is about. We are looking at the flow of data. Now in considering the flow of data, there is the input of data and then there is the output of data. So when we speak about input redirection, we are looking at the process of redirecting the input source for a command. Now, what does this mean, guys? Let, let me go into my terminal and try and explain that to you. Here I am in my terminal. When you enter a command in your terminal, it is an input. Then when you enter the command, you get an output. So we have an input right here and we receive an output right there. Now, this is what we have been used to all this while. However, apart from entering an input with my keyboard, now apart from receiving inputs from your keyboard into your terminal or shell, you can also decide that I'm not going to enter the input with my keyboard this time around. You can actually receive or enter the input from another file or you can receive the input from another operation's output. Don't get confused guys, it's really straight to the point and we are going to understand it in a second. Now let's talk about the aspect of output. It says output redirection is a process of redirecting the output destination for a command. Now just like I entered an input here and got an output. Now I can also decide that when I enter this input, I do not want this output to display here. I want it somewhere else. I could either decide to display the output in a file or can, I can decide to push the output to another input operation. We are going to demonstrate this for you to have a practical feel of it. But before we do that, let's understand what is the standard output. Now there is a term in shell known as the standard output. In a unit like operating system shell, the standard output, now this is also known as STD out. STD out. It is the default output stream that is used to display the output of a command on the screen. Now watch this. When you enter an input over here, we get an output and this is my screen. But before this output comes on the screen, there is something known as the standard output. So the output of the command actually goes to a place in the operating system known as the standard output. Then you as a developer can decide that, okay, I want the standard output to display my results on the screen. Or I want the standard output to display my results elsewhere in the file or wherever you choose to display the output. So the screen is not the only way of displaying outputs. When you enter a command, the result goes to the standard output. Then you can decide that, okay, from the standard output in the operating system, let's display the results maybe on the screen or maybe in a text file. Or you can even decide to push the result into another input of another operation. I hope you are beginning to get it. We'll demonstrate in a minute. Don't worry. Now look at this. When a command is executed in the shell, its output is usually directed to the standard output stream. Unless it is redirected to a file or another destination using output redirection. Now look at this. When a command is executed in the shell, its output is usually directed to the standard output stream, which is the screen. Unless it is redirected to a file or another destination using output redirection. And that is what we are going to learn how to do in this project today. Now, one last thing before we get our hands dirty. There is also another output known as the error output. And it is known as the STDERR, which is the standard error. Standard error output. In a unit like operating system shell, the error output is a separate stream. Now take note of this, it is a separate stream that is used to display error messages or diagnostic information generated by a command. So let's see, let's go back into my terminal. Now here in my terminal, when I list our files, I get a display right here on my screen. But let me clear my screen and I can also decide that instead of getting the display right here on the screen, I want the display to go into any file of my choosing. So let's say I want the display to go into a file known as output.test. Now when I enter, you realize that there is no display yet. Let us see the content of the file known as output.txt and let's see what is inside it. 
as you can see the list of my command has appeared in the file output.test instead of on the display now this is a very powerful of redirecting input and output now one more thing before we get our hands dirty we want to talk about fail test this is very important guys you want to pay attention here fail test they are commands that take input take note of this they take input from a source and transform it in some way before passing it out as an output and in shell there are various kinds of filters there is web there is sort there is scd and many many more when we check the resources you realize that there are several of them listed out there now in the resources you realize that there are various kinds of commands and filters that you can use in your shell we want to take time and read through all this but we are going to use some of them in answering our questions now let's zoom in and begin to talk about a few of our filters which will help us in answering our questions let's start with grep this command is used to search for specific patterns guys the keyword here is specific patterns in one or more files or input stream grep means global regular expression print if you get to know now the grep command can be used with various flags for instance there's the dash v flag now this prints all lines that do not match the pattern we are looking for now you understand what this means in a moment the dash n flag for instance prints the match line and its line number the dash w another example searches for whole words only now let us go and try out grep in our terminal here too what we have been used to is to list out files and then we have our list let me clear my screen or we can even decide to list out our files in the long format and i'm sure you know this ls l so this gives us a list of files in the long format great so let's try out grep and see how it works to use grep this is the syntax that we use take note of the syntax of using grep what you do is that you enter the command grep then this over here represents a flag that you may choose to use either any of these flags or more as you can find in the resources you can go that's v let's say if you want you want to print everything in your shell that does not match the pattern you are looking for or you could go dash n dash or anything now the pattern is what exactly you are looking for let's see let's say i'm looking for all html files in my shell I can use the part that pattern or I'm looking for a certain text in my shell. I can enter the pattern over here and then when you are done you enter the file name. So let's go try it out. Now instead of just listing my files in a long format and get getting the display, I'm going to pass this to grep. Now this vertical sign you see over here is known as a pipeline. We are going to talk about it in a moment. So I'm going to pass this command to grep and then I want instead of getting every list in my um, repository or in my folder, I only want to get the files with the extension HTML and then I enter. So instead of getting the entire list, I only have files with the extension .html. This is the power of grep. So grep gives you a pattern and we use grep to hone out that pattern. Now let's use one of the flags of grep and let's see how it works. These are the flags of grep. Let's try the first one, that's V and see how it works. It, it prints all the lines that do not match the pattern. Now this means that when we enter the pattern, we are actually going to get a list of things that do not contain that pattern. Let's go try it out. So let me clear my screen. I want a list of my folder in a long format. And I'm going to pass it to the pipeline. I'm using grep. And this time around, I'm using the dash V flag because I want a list that do not contain this pattern that I'm about to give it. So I want all files that do not contain the dots html extension and when i enter realize that i get all the other files that do not contain the dot html extension i have separated them from the html files let's try one more flag what of the dash n it prints the matched line and its number let's go try it out let me clear my screen so let me list out my files in the long format and pass it to grep and I want the dash n flag HTML. Look at what happened here. The numbers you see here are the line numbers of the files, which means that this file.html is on line 36. This is on line 37. This is on line 47. Leo.html is on line 47. So when you use the dash n flag for grep, it simply lists out the line number of your file. Now you realize that when I was passing a command to grep, I use this vertical line. What does this vertical line mean? That vertical line is what is known as the pipeline character. What you use this for is to 
chain filters so that the output of one character becomes the input of another character that is why in my terminal when i entered this is actually an input and it's supposed to give me an output but then i passed its output to another command which is grep dash n html and i get a sorted or a filtered result now these are some examples of how you can use the pipeline character so you can pass in a command this is ls dash l then you bring the pipeline symbol which is the vertical line then you pass in another command this is grep dash v is looking for a json file it's as simple as that people let's talk about one last filter we can use in the shell which is sort this is a very powerful feature and that arranges lines of text alphabetically or numerically and you can also use that with several flags you can use the dash n dash f dash plus x and all these have what they do for instance the dash n sorts it out numerically the dash r reverses the order of sorts let's go try the sort out let me clear my screen now i have a file in here i have named groceries groceries let's look at what is inside this file so let me less groceries this is just a list of groceries i'll be going for after recording this video and as you can see they are not sorted look at what happens if i sort groceries now we have the list sorted out in an alphabetical order isn't that wonderful you can do so much with this filter now let's try out one of the flags of sorts let's try out the dash n which sort, sorts things numerically so let me clear my screen and do it so let's sort groceries and as you can see because i didn't give them numbers they just sort it out alphabetically and it's so wonderful let's try one more flag of the sort which is the dash r which reverses the order of sort so let's see if we can reverse this order so let's sort dash r groceries look at what happened now instead of the list being in ascending alphabetical order now it is in descending alphabetical order it starts from a all the way to w interesting isn't it you can do so much with this command and there are a lot more flags that you can find when you go into the resources and i will encourage you to take time go in there read and then understand what all these things mean so now let's try and use the pipeline character to combine several of these filters and see how it goes let me clear my screen let's try and list out files in the long format and we use the pipeline and pass the output to the filter grep and let's look for html files with another filter sort you see what what i'm trying to do here i'm listing out my files with a long format i'm passing it to the filter grep grep is looking for all files with a dot html extension and then we want to sort them in alphabetical order when we enter what do we get so you can see i have my list in the long format and i have only html files and as you can see they are sorted out in alphab alphabetical order guys shell output redirection and input redirection is very powerful with this little understanding that we have let's try and go straight into the task and answer them